President of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Mr. President. In the name of God Almighty, praise be to God, the Lord of the worlds. Blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad and his kith and kin and companions. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I would like to offer my most sincere felicitations on your deserved election to the presidency of the General Assembly and seize the moment to express appreciation for the valuable efforts of our distinguished Secretary General, Mr. Chairman. Our world today is replete with fear and hope fear of war and hostile regional and global relations, fear of deadly confrontation of religious, ethnic, and national identities, fear of institutionalization of violence and extremism, fear of poverty and destructive discrimination, fear of decay and destruction of life-sustaining resources, fear of disregard for human dignity and rights, and fear of neglect of morality. Alongside these fears, however, there are new hopes. The hope of universal acceptance by the people and the elite all across the globe of yes to peace and no to war. And the hope of preference of dialogue over conflict and moderation over extremism. The recent election in Iran represent a clear living example of the wise choice of hope, rationality and moderation by the great people of Iran. The realization of democracy consistent with religion and the peaceful transfer of executive power manifested that Iran is the anchor of stability in an otherwise ocean of regional instabilities. The firm belief of our people and government in enduring peace, stability, tranquility, peaceful resolution of disputes and reliance on the ballot box as the basis of power, public acceptance and legitimacy has indeed play a key role in creating such a safe environment. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the current critical period of transition in international relations is replete with dangers, aligned with unique opportunities. Any miscalculation of one's position, and of course of others, will bear historic damages. A mistake by one actor will have negative impact on all others. Vulnerability is now a global and indivisible phenomenon. At this sensitive juncture in the history of global relations, the age of zero-sum game is over. Even though a few actors still tend to rely on archaic and deeply ineffective ways and means to preserve their own superiority and domination. Militarism and the resource to violent and military means to subjugate others are failed examples of the perpetuation of old vase in new circumstances. Coercive economic and military policies and practices geared to the maintenance and preservation of old superiorities and domination have been pursued in a conceptual mindset that negates peace, security, human dignity, and exalted human ideals. Ignoring differences between societies and globalizing Western values as universal ones represent another manifestation of this conceptual mindset. Yet another reflection of the same cognitive model is the persistence of Cold War mentality and bipolar division of the world into the superior us and inferior others, fanning fear and phobia around the emergence of new actors on the world scene is another. In such an environment, governmental and non-governmental, religious, ethnic, and even racial violence has increased. And there is no guarantee that the era of quiet among big powers will remain immune from such violent discourses, practices, and actions. The catastrophic impact of violent and extremist narratives should not, in fact, must not be underestimated. In this context, the strategic violence which is manifested in the efforts to deprive regional players from their national domain of action, containment policies, regime change from outside, and the efforts toward redrawing of political borders and frontiers is extremely dangerous and provocative. The prevalent international political discourse depicts a civilized center surrounded by uncivilized preferences. 
In this picture, the relation between the center of world power and the peripheries is hegemonic. The discourse assigning the north the center stage and relegating the south to the periphery has led to the establishment of a monologue at the level of international relations, the creation of illusory identity distinctions, and the current prevalent violent forms of xenophobia are the inevitable outcome of such a discourse, propagandistic and unfounded faith-phobic, Islamophobic, Shia-phobic, and Iran-phobic discourses do indeed represent serious threats against world peace and human security. This propagandistic discourse has assumed dangerous proportions through portrayal and inculcation of presumed imaginary threats. One such imaginary threat is the so-called Iranian threat, which has been employed as an excuse to justify a long catalog of crimes and catastrophic practices over the past three decades. The arming of the Saddam Hussein regime with chemical weapons and supporting the Taliban and Al-Qaeda are just two examples of such catastrophes. Let me say this in all sincerity before this August World Assembly, that based on irrefutable evidence, those who harp on the so-called threat of Iran are either a threat against international peace and security themselves, or promote such a threat. Iran poses absolutely no threat to the world or the region. In fact, in ideals as well as in actual practice, my country has been a harbinger of just peace and comprehensive security. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, nowhere in the world has violence been so deadly and destructive as in North Africa and West Asia. Military intervention in Afghanistan, Saddam Hussein's imposed war against Iran, occupation of Kuwait, military intervention interventions against Iraq, brutal repression of the Palestinian people, assassination of common people and political figures in Iran, and terrorist bombings in countries such as Iraq, Afghanistan, and Lebanon are examples of violence in this region in the last three decades. What has been and continues to be practiced against the innocent people of Palestine is nothing less than structural violence. Palestine is under occupation. The basic rights of the Palestinians are tragically violated, and they are deprived of the right of return and access to their homes, birthplace, and homeland. Apartheid as a concept can hardly describe the crimes and the institutionalized aggression against the innocent Palestinian people. The human tragedy in Syria represent a painful example of catastrophic spread of violence and extremism in our region. From the very outset of the crisis, and when some regional and international actors helped to militarize the situation through infusion of arms and intelligence into the country, an active support of extremist groups, we emphasized that there was no military solution to the Syrian crisis. Pursuit of expansionist strategies and objectives and attempts to change the regional balance through proxies cannot be camouflaged behind humanitarian rhetoric. The common objective of the international community should be a quick end to the killing of the innocent while condemning any use of chemical weapons we welcome serious acceptance of the Chemical Weapons Convention and believe that the access by extremist terrorist groups to such weapons is the greatest danger to the region that must be considered in any disarmament plan. Simultaneously, I should underline the illegitimate and ineffective threat to use or the actual use of force will only lead to further exacerbation of violence and crisis in the region. Terrorism and the killing of innocent people represent the ultimate inhumanity of extremism and violence. Terrorism is a violent scourge and knows no country or national borders. But the violence and extreme actions such as the use of drones against innocent people in the name of combating terrorism should also be condemned. Here, I should also say a word about the criminal assassination of Iranian nuclear scientists. For what crimes have they been assassinated? The United Nations and the Security Council should answer the question. Have the perpetrators been condemned? 